Uh, welcome back to the Level Up webinar series. My name is Lauren and I'm a part of Iron Source's marketing team. Iron Source and Jam City have joined forces for the last Level Up webinar of 2019. Today, Or Shahar, the GM of our US office, and Sarah Wolf, a senior product manager at Jam City, will be discussing the psychology of rewarded video and its impact on wider game metrics. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to take a few seconds to tell you a bit more about what we do here at Iron Source. Iron Source is developing the industry's leading growth engine for mobile games, and we reach 2.7 billion engaged players a month. Our ad mediation platform is number one in the market for game developers. Um, these are some of the partners that we work with. Um, and all of our webinars are designed to ensure the game developers like yourselves are able to truly accelerate your game's growth. All of our past webinars are available on demand at www.ironsrc.com slash webinars. Um, and like we said, they'll be available on demand. So, or take it away. Sure. I will this is Sarah. Um, I just will I'll do a quick introduction to Jam City. Um, so a lot of you may know us by some of our award winning uh, games such as Cookie Jam, uh, Panda Pop and Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, which is the game that uh, I work on. Um, we have nine studios. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. Um, um, and yeah, we create a lot of unique and, and deeply engaging mobile games and I'm very excited to be participating today. Okay, cool. Thank you, Sarah. Um, cool, guys. So uh, thank you so much uh, all for joining. Uh, I'm very, very excited to, to take part of this webinar and partner with uh, Sarah. And hopefully the next um, session will be interesting for all of you and will make us uh, as an industry uh, more sophisticated uh, when it comes to the a ad monetization tool that we call rewarded video or rewarded ads. What I'd like to do today is uh, focus on uh, uh, presenting you an analysis and the research that we've uh, conducted here in the, at Iron Source, focusing on the motivation of players to engage with rewarded video. We'll try and see patterns of cor correlation between such engagement to other post install events, and specifically, we'll focus on the payers um, community. Uh, together with Sarah, we'll try and come up with the different questions and best practices that can be uh, interesting. And additional, additionally, some tests that can uh, contribute to such a um, potential growth. Um, so the first thing that I want to focus on is why focus on the rewarded video. We'll start with the value of uh, such session. And for me, the main, main thing here and my main goal for today and for doing this analysis is all about sparking ideas in the industry about what kind of A-B test you should be doing, what kind of segmentation you should be utilizing, what kind of factors you should uh, put the, uh, into the decision-making process when it comes to the implementation of reported video. So if we get to, if that's what we get from today, I think uh, uh, that will be great. And of course, I would love to continue the discussion afterwards or through your questions during that this webinar. For us just to level the playing field, so rewarded video has been booming for the last uh, few years as we all know it. And the, the way that I look at it, the reason for it is the win-win-win in the market when we focus on the player having a great experience and opt-in experience with the user uh, has the ability to initiate the ad and choose uh, to engage with it and at the same time obviously get a reward and see some value from that in the industry what we see that advertising activity so user acquisition through rewarded video generates high quality and allows uh, for a positive brand association to to your game and on the monetization side, what we see is that the reward video is able to provide very high engagement and correlate to other re retention-based um, motivation when it comes to the uh, integration. Uh, if you uh, KPIs or a few benchmarks, usually we'll see 15 to 30 second long rewarded video, and some of it will be skippable, some won't. The average engagement in the market would be around 35%. Uh, and the average amount of users videos the users will watch around 4.5. 4 you can see the other uh, KPIs here. We have available a lot more uh, granular 
a benchmark a reports that I'd love to share. Here we're just giving the uh, highlights. The two main KPIs that we care about in this analysis are a engagement rate and the second usage rate. So engagement rate would be the amount of unique users that will engage with rewarded video out of a million daily active user, 400,000 will engage, which means 40% engagement rate. For those 40% of users that engage, they will watch in average six videos a day. That will be their usage rate, six videos a day. And that will result, result with, in this example, the 2.4 million uh, impressions. So just keep in mind engagement rate and usage rate. Um, I'll be talking about these two KPIs mostly. What my motivation was, it was to try and identify or understand what makes users engage with rewarded video. And that's how we started a, our journey when it came to our research. What we did is we started by looking at the comments of users online and try to gather as many as we can, as we could, um, and see if we can find different patterns. We were actually able to find uh, a lot of insights that were very interesting. In front of you are some of these uh, highlighted comments that uh, we found, and uh, I always found the top one by Jeremy Smith uh, funny, as it shows the level of insanity that rewarded video can uh, generate for uh, users, but obviously there are many, many. During, using that uh, analysis, we came into four groups of uh, users that are differentiated by their motivation to engage <clears throat> with reward video. So I'll take you through each of the, these groups. The first group is the winning group. This group are the winners, the users that know that they are very well, very good in playing the game. They are gamers at heart and they want to win. They want to surpass the challenge and also get that willing, winning uh, feeling. So what we see in the market that in order to support such motivation, developers will implement different types of uh, placements that support it. In the example in front of you, doubling your reward after surpassing a challenge, after win winning any part of the game, definitely serves that motivation. And these kind of uh, placements correlate very well with uh, the motivation of the user and engage and result with very, very high engagement rate. The second group is the, as I called it, the non-losing. These are the users that uh, we find that are not gamers at heart. They are not the best playing your game and they know it. So what they're looking for is just find a way to utilize rewarded video in order to make progress within the game. They know that they need help and we want to support them by utilizing reward video and help them make the next step um, in the game. What uh, is the most common example in the market is the retry second chance uh, implementation. This is very common and I would say in the last year almost uh, available in all hyper, hyper casual and some of the casual games out there. So uh, think about the motivation of those users that are not savvy enough and how we can support their journey um, in the game through these kind of placements that we see very uh, often. The third one is the unique or the uniqueness seekers, right? Uh, the uniqueness seekers are basically trying to feel special. They would like to make sure that the engagement with rewarded video allows them to get a tailored experience, allows them to have uh, something that is not available to the, uh, uh, to the whole audience. So there are, di there are different ways that we can achieve a satisfaction for these users and their motivation. And one example that we see here and there in the market is changing the reward or adjustment of the reward based on the uh, game progression. What that generates, that is, and the example in front of you, a user on the left uh, button at the, at the bottom left will get a different reward based on the level that is at the game. And that results with a different experience a special experience for the user as he makes progress. The fourth one is also something that is potentially a, a common to, all, to some of us, and that will be the controlling group. These users uh, are looking to gain control over the experience. By gaining control, it's mostly about them having the ability to make a choice and decide how the gameplay will continue. 
in order to do that, what developers are usually utilizing can be a, the ability to engage with reward video and then to allow the user to uh, choose which rewards he wants. In the example in front of you, a user will click get the blessing at the bottom of the screen. He will watch the rewarded video and then and at the end of it, he will be able to choose between, between different types of blessing. Think about how well this kind of implementation serves the motivation of these, um, of these users and obviously how much it empowers them. The main thing when we're looking at all of these examples is how we can best align the user motivation and the developer's perspective around how to implement rewarded video. It's not that I think based on our analysis that every user will always stay at the same group. It's not that the, the majority of users will always be in, in, in belonging to one group or the other, but we can definitely use the data at hand today to identify which motivation serves best the majority of, user, of the users in a specific a game or in a specific cohort a, that, that we'd like to uh, a, analyze. A, cool. In order to continue and a, uh, continue with this line of thought in our research, what we decided to do is gather more data. After gathering the user perspective, we also wanted to connect it to other KPIs. What we've done is we've chosen uh, 30 plus apps that are using the Iron Source platform and are also buying users at scale and that gave us access to the post-install uh, event data we were able to gather the uh, users or the, the apps into three main categories. So idle, words and match three, which we co uh, combined because of similarities in data and casual, that includes different sub genres. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned, we focus on rewarded video. We did not run a scientific analysis that I can sit in front of you today and prove the real causation between engagement with rewarded video and other post-install events or other uh, KPIs that uh, we care about. Uh, like the example in front of you, even though we found a lot of uh, points of correlation between engagement and others, other KPIs, the same way that ice cream sales and violent crime index are correlated, it is not a true causation today. And this is why we are very much focused on the A-B testing and sparking ideas for engage for implementation rather than giving the uh, final uh, results here, which, is, which would uh, be support for everyone. Um, cool. A lot of the insights that I'm gonna present are related to the payer community, which I thought would be the most uh, interesting highlight uh, to present because it's still, there's still a room for the market to grow, to evolve when it comes to how do we treat users that are payers or have a high probability to pay uh, when it comes to engaging with rewarded people. Cool. The first takeaway that uh, is interesting is that we see that the engagement of the paying community is higher than the non-paying community of users. Here in the graphs in front of you, you can see that at the top uh, pie charts, this is the payer community and at the bottom is the non-payers. The payers definitely engage more. This makes sense. The users that are uh, already uh, paying are usually uh, more engaged and more savvy to play the game. What we thought was interested, interesting here is why are they doing it? And potentially one reason for that would be the fact that they're trying to protect uh, their investment and get the most out of it. Um, and you can see that it's pretty much across all of the genres that, we, uh, that we've analyzed, with idle being the uh, strongest indication of uh, correlation between pairs and engagement. The second thing that we looked at is whether the engagement rate changes before and after an IP event. Here as well, you can see that all of the, in all of the uh, subgenres that we've chosen, uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is the same behavior before and after. So a user will engage before uh, making that in a purchase. Potentially, their rewarded video supports and helps the user get to that journey in the game. 
and the user will continue and engage after. And as we said, potentially because uh, they would uh, be looking to protect their investment. I would love if anyone has other ideas uh, for us to brainstorm, that would be uh, great. The second thing that the or second highlight that can be uh, interesting for us to think of is whether or not usage rate, and again, usage rate, the amount or the average amount of a uh, video the user consumes a day, uh, does that affect the in-app purchase average revenue per user? What we can see in the majority of the cases that the IAP ARPU will grow in tandem with the amount of videos or the number of videos a user consumes. In the graphs in front of you, again, pair genre that we've chosen, you can see the highlighted example within the words and match. The groups of um, users engaging with 10 to 12 videos, their ad ARP DAO, our ad ARPU in red might be higher, we can talk about why, and the IAP ARPU will be in blue. If you compare them to the group of users engaging with 12 to 14, you can see that there is growth in the IAP ARPU in tandem with the growth in the amount of uh, videos shown. Why would we see anomalies where the ad ARP, ARPU changes? That's, I would say, a different discussion, more related to the eCPM generated by the test group that we've uh, chosen. And you can see that in the majority of the cases, it's actually both ads and IAP ARPU that is growing. In order for us to try and get some, uh, based on the data, some action line for it, what we think is very interesting is to test capping of rewarded video uh, at the highest usage rate. That leads to one of the main things that I care about, which is how does the market uh, introduce more sophisticated segmentation models when it, and using the number of videos the user watches as a segmentation a cohort or a segmentation group. So we definitely, whenever we see a capping based on usage rate, we do see interesting uh, results there. The second insight that could be interesting is that in cases where IAP ARPU drops, although this group is watching more videos, this, these are the places where we should definitely a, a test capping the frequency and it should potentially lead to uh, immediate results there. The uh, other thing that we wanted to highlight is what would the, uh, be the effect of usage rate over the average revenue per paying user uh, versus average revenue per user. Here in the graphs in front of you, so I've highlighted one of the examples. So within the casual uh, genre, subgenre, uh, the group of users that are consuming six to eight videos have a much higher RPPU than the group of users consuming eight to 10. When we're trying to think of why, so obviously we have to analyze it on a game level and understand the game play, pro game progression of each of these groups in average. But it is interesting for us as an indication for places where the user actually needs more of the a rewarded video element in order to make progression or game difficulty where reward video won't be enough and there the user is more motivated to go and uh, make an in-app purchase in order to make a progress in the game. Here, uh, in economical terms, we'd like to always look at the marginal gain of the last impression and use it both for the optimization part and both for a, a KPI that is very much connected to retention and the probability or predictability of a user to become a paying user. And that's something that I find very interesting when developers would come to us and we'll try together to analyze that marginal gain. I think that can be an immediate a growth or an immediate test to be done and show some success. Um, continuing with the usage rate, what we want to see is whether or not it's going to drop after users make a purchase. So I was watching 10 videos a day in average, I made a purchase, am I going to consume less? Am I going to consume more? What we see here is that it, the usage rate can potentially be an indicator for that payment probability and that users will, in the majority of the cases, change their behavior. In the graph in front of you, which I know is a little bit, uh, includes a lot of details, so I'll try and explain it um, in a clear way. The left pie chart represents the distribution of usage rate before a user makes an in-app purchase. On the green part, you can see the 36% of users within the idle 
category are consuming over 50 videos a day. When we go to the middle pie chart, we can see that for that group, only 37% continued with the same behavior. The, the other 63% uh, changed it and the majority of it actually dropped in the amount of videos that they consume. On the right pie chart, we a, a focused on the group of users that was a consuming 10 to 20 videos a day. And here you can see that only 28 continue with the same engagement, whereas 51% of these users a, actually dropped to zero to 10. The interesting thing here, uh, in my opinion, is whether or not we should consider testing different rewards for users post their payment in order for them to continue and engage. A, because we want them to continue and en engage because that grows their retention. And also what we hope that the data will show per case that we test is that it will increase the probability for a follow a up uh, a, for a second, second in a purchase event. Uh, these are the data points for idle. We also saw similar a behavior on casual and the uh, and the other genres with say similar insights uh, that we can gather from. The other part of that was whether or not the payer rate, so the percentage of users that will generate that will pay, changes based on usage rate. The highlighted example on the left on idle represents a, a that a indication where users watching over 50% have over 50 videos a day have a, almost the double probability of making an in a purchase comparing to the group a, of the left a, on the left side um, action items that they, I recommend a testing rewards before and after making in app purchases uh, and using the segmentation for it uh, things that the developers can do is potentially change the currency type with different virtual items, potentially present maybe something that is more uh, lucrative for users um, to get as a reward post their payment. Uh, and of course, the amount itself. So instead of 10 coins, 20 coins, that can also be an interesting test for you guys to, um, uh, to look at. Um, as we, one of our biggest things is, uh, or motivation, mine specifically with the partnerships that I manage is to connect uh, the data that we provide and the tools that we provide to uh, the real people that are building and uh, making the, the games out there. So that's why we have Sarah here as a, a, as a the professional product manager. So I'd love for you to present your case study. Sure, thanks, Or. Um, we could go to the next slide. <clears throat> um, so I'll just start with an overview of you know, why Jam City utilizes rewarded video. Um, so first and foremost, we do this to increase our LTV and our engagement. Um, we have a pretty high engagement rate in Harry Potter specifically, over 50% of our users engage with ads daily. So there's a, uh, a definite hunger to have ads. Um, we also see, uh, as Orr had mentioned before, that users who engage in uh, our ads are, are more likely to make purchases, um, but they also allow us to monetize our non-payers as well. Um, other benefits uh, that we've seen are they can help us demonstrate value for our IEPs, um, you know, by offering up rewards and, uh, you know, users being able to use those rewards to progress in the game, then they see the benefit of making purchases later, um, which definitely supports what Orr was saying. Um, and then, uh, you know, well-designed ad placements can also increase retention um, with that idea of uh, furthering their progression. Uh, and lastly, intuitive placements allow for better feature surfacing as well, um, which I'll get into in a, a couple other slides. Um, so some best practices that I've come up with uh, during my time uh, pertain to uh, having placements that uh, are related to the core loop of your game. Um, so these tend to be your best performing placements um, that uh, allow people to uh, further their progression and further their core motivation for playing. Um, next, uh, intu uh, placements should be very intuitive. Uh, they should surface in a way that doesn't require any conscious thinking to understand their value. Um, so there should be a lot of thought that goes into their UI and how they uh, first appear to players uh, so that there's nothing as confusing and they don't have to question if it's going to help them or not. 
Uh, next, they should definitely help with friction reduction. Um, they uh, ads should never uh, be something that users have a negative association with uh, if you want to get that engagement rate up and those out LTVs up. Uh, so, you know, if you help, if they help you further your gameplay, then they'll become a positive association. And lastly, uh, you should always think about adding new placements in a very holistic approach. Uh, you know, we there's you're definitely optimizing to maximize your returns and minimize your IP cannibalization. Uh, you need to be planning rewards uh, based on scarcity and demand. Um, so it, it takes a holistic view to make sure that uh, you're getting the most optimal return from a new placement. Um, so I'll just do a, a overview of a, a placement that recently went into Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Uh, there's nothing very revolutionary about this placement. Um, what it is, is uh, a we call it our daily deal placement. It appears in our currency store um, beside our bundle uh, in-app purchases. Um, it rotates uh, a different reward every 24 hours and it's available to 100% of our players. Um, and then we, we surface this through pips uh, in, uh, on the main uh, game HUD uh, to get them to go to, to the store to collect this reward. Um, so the goals were to just increase our ad revenue and impressions. Um, we wanted a net positive effect on our overall revenue. And then as a secondary goal, we wanted to see increased visits to our IEP store. We coupled this with a UI revamp to our store. Um, and so uh, we wanted to see if there was any kind of a positive benefit by getting more people in there, looking at our special bundles um, and looking at other exciting things that they could get. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, so the hypothesis here um, was just that it, it would have a positive uh, effect on our LTV and ad impressions. Um, and like I said, that it would give uh, more visibility and awareness. Um, and then the idea for the rotating rewards is that we'd have a little bit more control um, to uh, minimize our risk for IAP cannibalization um, instead of training users that they would be getting the same things uh, that you know we would be able to sort of offer it up and and have them uh, get something unique every day. And this does uh, relate back to uh, Orr's matrix. I believe that if I had to place this somewhere, um, I would put it on uh, the, the spectrum of uh, a unique uh, feeling that uh, motivation that players are getting to sort of uh, collect this reward uh, by calling it a daily deal and sort of surfacing as something that's like they're they're essentially getting for free. Um, I think that it really uh, helps players associate it positively. Um, and then the result here, we saw our ad ARPDAO increase by 17%. So it was very successful for us. Um, our store visits increased by 25%. We saw an insignificant effect on our IEP ARPDAO, um, which we thought was a good thing. Uh, we're still sort of measuring the effect on um, how those increased store visits might uh, translate into a higher bundle ARPDAO uh, later. But overall, there was a very positive player reaction to this, um, especially since it was geared towards payers, which uh, historically, uh, you know, we've, we've been a little bit uh, stricter on uh, ads uh, because of the past thinking that we would be cannibalizing IEP. So all in all, we thought it was very successful um, and it made us excited to do more testing uh, with ads geared towards payers in the future. Uh, and so just a summary, it's been very, uh, rewarded video has been very beneficial to our success. Um, we definitely approach rewarded video uh, as a feature design, uh, and I, we think that that approach is very effective. Um, you know, allowing users to engage with ads to receive um, these rewards that help them in their core progression is critical. Um, and then a rewarded video placement geared towards payers can have a, very, have a net positive increase in revenue if it's designed and balanced correctly. Cool. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. Just to um, uh, summarize uh, both parts for us, the main motivation where we started and I started the, the journey of analyzing psychology, psychological uh, impacts of the rewarded video um, a component to uh, the user's journey in the game. Um, we see that it's worth the time and it's worth the effort uh, of uh, of developers to think about it and that the data at hand today 
because it's so granular, can definitely support the is support the, the process to for getting maximum engagement. We definitely can uh, provide a confidence in the correlation that we see between the in-app purchase and uh, activity and the rewarded video engagement. Although we haven't proven causation here, it's still uh, enough uh, as we see it to grow the appetite of the market to run these tests and to think of the segmentation models, the models that are relevant. And echoing uh, what Sarah said, treating rewarded video as a feature in the game design, in the implementation that you choose, whichever, we, whichever developer is doing it and that we're working with, we see immediate results and we see immediate uh, positive uh, impact. So I definitely uh, encourage you guys to utilize the products out there, the data uh, available 